Pal World has gone from zero to extremely popular game very fast, but there are things about it that people don't like. And no, I'm not talking about what Nintendo might dislike about it, I'm talking about other stuff. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things players hate about Pal World. Starting off at number 10, it's having to hold the button down to craft. Like I said, there's plenty Nintendo might not like about this game. Part of it is that a lot of people seem to actually kind of like the idea of Pokemon as a survival game, and Nintendo hasn't done that. However, Pal World hasn't done it perfectly, but obviously this is a survival game, so there's crafting, and that's positive for a lot of people. But that doesn't mean people like holding down a button to craft. It's not a big deal at first. You can finish building stuff pretty quick when you're just starting out, but it doesn't take long to reach the point where you're having to hold down the crafting key for a minute, two minutes, uh, six minutes, and it can get worse. And it's just to build stuff. Yeah, I, I know why it's like that. The game's trying to get you to use your pals for production, but sometimes they're not usable. Sometimes they need a break. Sometimes they keep ignoring their job or get stuck in a the wall. There's lots of reasons why you might end up just crafting something yourself, and it can take what feels like forever. and you just gotta sit there and hold the button down. Uh, people have resorted to DIY solutions like using screws and Q-tips to hold the F button down on the keyboard, or even like a clamp to hold down the button on an Xbox controller. It's one of those small things about a game that gets annoying fast, and it's an easy fix too. You just make a single button to press to craft, and look at that, problem solved. And number nine, PAL Sphere fails, um, again. You know how it goes, you see a PAL that's completely out of your league, but it looks cool, so you throw a sphere at it. I mean, there's a .03 catch rate, so it's not impossible. Of course, trying to catch something with low chances is a huge waste of time, but you can't help it. Call it sunk cost or whatever, but you wasted too many resources trying to catch the thing already. What's one more pole in the slot machine? Trying to catch PALs with a super low chance of success can suck, but you know what's even worse? Trying and failing to capture ones that should be easy. Uh, you've seen it, you've thrown an expensive legendary sphere at something, and it fails. I've seen a lot of people complain about how capture rates are calculated. Uh, there are a lot of people who think it's either messed up or the game just makes it way easier to capture things without telling you early on. I legitimately have no idea if the capture rates are as displayed. They may not be accurate. They may just be the game messing with the rates behind the scenes. I don't know. I haven't been through the code. If I tried to go through the code, I wouldn't understand it anyway. But it is something I've seen floating around. All that really matters is that it sucks when PAL spheres fail. And it happens more and more as you level up. And number eight, moving your base really sucks. Sometimes there's not a lot of getting around it. You're going to have to move your base. There is a better spot for it somewhere else. Your pals are getting stuck or maybe you just want to change the scenery. But at some point, you got to pack everything up, move it someplace else. And unfortunately, it really sucks. The problem is that your inventory isn't shared between bases. So the only way to get all those crafting materials to your new base is to haul it over there on foot. So if your bases are really long ways, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of running. A lot of running. Gotta move a small amount of the old dragon horde at a time from the old base to the new one. Or hey, maybe you'll just use the grappling hook. Either way, it's gonna be awkward and slow and tedious. I don't care. It's gonna suck, regardless. I do wonder if there has to be like a easier base moving method, because it's, it's just the opposite of smooth. At least the game makes it easy to play with your base in one location because the abundance of fast travel points, but it doesn't really help when you actually need to move. When it's time to transfer everyone from one base to another, you just gotta pick your poison. No matter what you do, it's gonna suck. You just have to do it, and that's that. And number seven, everyone hates corpse runs. There's one mechanic almost every survival game has that no one seems to like. Uh, drop on death, where you lose everything in your inventory when you die. How do you get it back? Well, you walk back and get it. It's a corpse run, and guess what? It is a pain in most games, and it is a pain here in PAL World. I get having a mechanic like this in some kind of hardcore PvP game, but in something that's currently co-op only, it's really a drag. It's especially frustrating when you die in a hot or cold area. Uh, these places are tough to explore when you're fully equipped, and when you've got nothing, it's harder. So you're probably just gonna die a whole bunch trying to get your stuff back. Ah! 
The worst part about dropping your items on death is when they fall into a place where you can't retrieve them, like if you die over lava. That stuff's just gone forever. That's not even counting all the ways you can die from glitches. It is an early access scam, after all. I will give it a little credit. It does let you turn off dropping items when you die. And I want to say you should probably switch to that because the whole mechanic is a lot more trouble than it's worth. And number six, you can only make three bases. Uh, in a world as big as this, only being able to build three bases is a, re it's a real limiting factor. Especially if you're in a guild. Yeah, e e big shared group, yay. You can only ever build three bases for everyone. And those bases are not that big and you run into problems pretty quick. There's honestly a lot that's annoying about the base building. Storage chests aren't linked between bases, so transferring materials between them is a huge pain. You can't make your bases any bigger. The build parameter is round, not square. And that causes all kinds of problems with mostly square structures that you have to build. I don't know, on default settings, if any part of your base goes outside the circle, it'll start deteriorating immediately before disappearing. I mean, at least the game lets you turn this setting off if you want, but if you do have it on, you're gonna run into issues. Honestly, if you're playing solo, there's no reason not to just turn the structure deterioration rate to zero. If it's not a multiplayer server, it'll eventually fill up with junk. It doesn't matter. Of course, if you are playing online, there's not a lot that can be done. You just have to deal with the annoying base limitations, at least until the devs update the game. And number five is PAL pathfinding. Catching and using PALs, obviously pretty central to PAL world. But the pathfinding and general AI of the PALs makes it feel like the world was not designed specifically for them. Let's say, I'm a PAL and this is my world. I don't know anything about how to interact with it, but it's mine. If I had a nickel for every time I heard a PAL say that. Anyway, trying to get the PALs to do something in a base it really feels like uh, pulling teeth. You wanted to work a crafting bench, uh, but what they do instead is endlessly mine ore. Cool. Maybe you want them to sleep, but for some reason they keep getting up or they get stuck in a wall and start to starve or they just run around back and forth randomly. There, There's issues with the pals. They sometimes uh, just refuse to do anything. They'll sit there uselessly even in the middle of a fight, not fight, and let enemies just beat on them. Also, I love it when they just refuse to acknowledge that certain parts of my base even exist. That's fun. Uh, pals can be dumb, as dumb as a box of rocks, and about as useful a lot of the time. Um, and that's something that they really, really need to work on. The devs do seem to be taking this pretty seriously, and AI improvements are their highest priority, apparently. So, in the future, this situation does seem like it's one that's going to improve, which is go very good, because right now they are very, very dumb. They're so dumb, pretty much any multi-level base is pretty much worthless. The pals seem to uh, view the world entirely from a top-down perspective, and they only seem to be aware of the things that are on the top. So if you build a house with some crafting stations on the roof and a cooking station inside, they will not know about the cooking station. They will know about the crafting stations, not the cooking station, though. Even when you do build a base uh, that's as basic and spaced out as it can be, they'll find ways to get lost or just get stuck on crap. The game really needs a more robust AI system for the pals. Right now, they require way too much micromanagement. Um, it doesn't make it not fun, but the more you play it, the more you find those limitations. And number four is fire. Pal World's pretty forgiving as far as survival crafting games go, but when it comes to fire, this game really just has no mercy. Fire on just one wooden tile is enough to completely destroy hours of hard work, and the lesson is just don't build a wooden base, which is unfortunate because wooden structures look way better than the stone ones. Uh, but if your base is mostly made of wood, all it takes is a little spark and the whole thing goes up in an inferno. Water pals are supposed to put out fires, but uh, remember the thing that we just talked about with their uh, artificial intelligence or lack thereof? Yeah, good luck getting the pals to help put out the fires. On the rare occasion that they do try to, most of the time they get all hyper fixated on a specific tile while the fire is just spread to everything. But most of the time, they just prioritize doing other things instead. Fire is not the big problem here. It's, uh, you know, phasing halfway through some matter and getting stuck. That's, that's, that's much more important. Like, I wish the game would at least let us build stuff with wood, then eventually upgrade the walls as something sturdier, but it doesn't do that. Ark lets you do that, and that is a piece of inspiration they definitely should have taken from there. Um, but the only way to replace walls in PAL world is to just break them and build another wall.
And number three is the clunky building mechanics. Uh, it's another one of those problems that's pretty common to survival crafting games. Power World manages to be a cut above or below, depending on what exactly you need. Trying to do anything with stairs, is, is it's frustrating. Getting them to stack high like regular stairs is a, a lot more difficult than it should be. Because, you know, that's what stairs are. And for some reason, trying to set triangle tiles under the stairs, it, it, it doesn't work. Looks like it should fit perfectly, but the game is like, no, uh-uh, no, uh-uh. Why, why do you think you should be able to do that? Stop it. Roofs aren't any better either. Uh, you gotta find the perfect magic pixel to actually get them to go in the right spot, which can be very tedious. If the game allowed you to just overlap a little bit, the whole process would be way less annoying, but right now, you can't. Like I said, it's a common issue in games like this, but there are games that have been able to make building a lot less annoying, and I really do hope Pal World becomes one of them. And number two, when you're building a wall and it won't connect, the previous entry covered your regular building problems, but this is this is much more Pal World specific. There's a major, major issue with bases in this game, and they're called walls. Nothing about walls seems to work right. You, you build a circular fence around your base, doesn't link up properly. There's unsightly gaps where the wall touches the ground. The gates, for some reason, work differently, let's say. Regular walls, they always stick straight up while gates angle with the terrain. So unless you're on a perfectly flat surface, which, you know, you aren't always, then the gate and the walls just, they will never match up. Ever, ever, ever. Not possible. Oh yeah, and they're worthless anyway because your pals will just glitch through them. The walls aren't even capable of doing the most basic thing, which is keeping the pals in. Until the devs get this stuff sorted out, there's not really a point in walls. And finally, at number one, it's ore. For the most part, the PAL world experience is surprisingly smooth for being an early access game. Collecting resources is pretty smooth, at least until you hit around the mid game and then everything comes grinding to a bit of a halt. The problem with crafting in later parts of the game is you're constantly getting bottlenecked by rare-ish materials that are just not easy to get. Like, there's no shortcut at all. Stuff like ore, coal, sulfur, PAL fluid is another one. Probably the one with my least favorite name. Uh, do not like saying the words PAL fluid. But, uh, you know, they're all required for crafting higher level gear, and there's not an easy way to get most of it. Sure, it can be difficult to get stuff like ore at first, but eventually there should be a way that makes getting it easier because everything needs it, basically. The game does give you structures for mining. Why not make one that gets you ore at a certain point? The game doesn't have to give it to you right away, but something like that eventually would make the game feel a lot smoother. Everything needs ingots, which you make with ore, but at a certain point it feels like you never have enough unless you stop everything you're doing and grind getting as much ore as you can. By that point in the game, you really shouldn't have to run around punching rocks to get resources. That stuff should be mostly automated by then, but at least right now, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, I bet the game is probably going to introduce some kind of ore mine at a later update. It seems like a no-brainer considering how much you need it, but until that issue is fixed, the later parts of PAL World get a little grindy and annoying, at least when it comes to getting certain resources, or obviously chief among them. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.